instrument that I decided to do is called a sistrum. It is from Egypt and it is a percussion instrument. My standards that I would use for this, which is for second grade, for my art standard, it is to identify elements of visual arts, including color, line, shape, texture, and space. And for my social studies standards, it is for um, the differences and similarities of cultures around the world are attributable to their diverse origins, histories, and interactions with other cultures throughout time. And the objective for this standard is to describe how the culture of a, or a community reflects the history, daily life, or beliefs of its people. I want to do a unit on world religions when I teach this. So having a lesson where we focus on gods and goddesses, this would be perfect because of the depiction of Isis holding this and having the connection that they can see and they can hold physically. As I said before, um, Egyptians used this instrument, but they used it for rituals and rites, and it was to aid, aid other instruments because it was a percussion instrument. Um, the sistrums that we have now were found in burial sites, so <laughs> were they really found? No. Well, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, so according to Mark Cartwright, this makes him believe that they were used, or that people, ancient Egyptians believed that if they brought them with them, they'd have music in the afterlife. The developmental stages that I considered for this were for second graders, so seven and eight year olds. Um, their motor skills are still, like, they're there. They can they can do it really well. But, um, so having, like, the tiny wire and the buttons work really well. That's, depending on the age, like, you could have bigger holes or little holes, but, um, then I also have peer pressure, and I wanted them to all make their, um, sistrums with different colors, as I did here, because I didn't want there to be any peer pressure, which is big at this age. So, to list four elements or principles of design that make my instrument stand out, or this instrument, so first I have color, and... On the bottom, I have a bunch of natural looking um, buttons. I have browns and kind of like marble one right here and black. And then this was because I saw the pictures that I saw and the research that I did. This is kind of what the clay would look like. And I wanted to see how it would actually look. And then the top I did bright colors and I actually did them in the colors of the Egyptian flag to make them stand out. Um, the space is next, so the distance between the wires and the top of it um, and the buttons give me nice space, nice negative space so it's not too busy. Um, texture, so systems can be made out of clay and a lot of the ones that they found in burial sites were made out of clay but they weren't really made to play which was interesting. Um, yeah, but I also went with organic materials because this is what I had uh, due to uh, COVID. <laughs> and then, so I had all these laying around my house and then we have woods in the backyard. So I chose this, but I really liked how I had the smooth buttons for texture. And then I had the rough and jagged part of the sticks. Because it made it look more interesting than just if it was all smooth. Lastly, shape. So the ones... Or the examples of these that I found online that were more for children were made out of sticks and kind of like this, like with a Y shape, if you can see. Um, but according to from Mark Cartwright from ancienthistory.com or .edu, my bad. There, the Egyptians did them in two shapes, so an oval or a temple. A temple just means it kind of looks like a temple, so it's kind of like rectangular. But, I mean, I couldn't find a rectangular stick. But I also think that the organic shape, and also it kind of looks like a triangle. But, um, the shape of this turned out really well. But overall, this is a sistrum, and it was used in Egyptian rituals and rites. And it is a percussion instrument, so it goes. But yeah, thank you.